I was doing the, you know, the rapper impersonation and stuff like that. And I remember I really said, you know what, nah, I've, like, you know what, I want to try to become an artist and stuff like that. So I stopped that all together, right? And of course, you know, I had to go through the, the loss of followers. I think I lost like 40,000 followers in one summer type, right? And, you know, I'm thinking like, okay, if this is where I wanted to go, I have to fine tune it along the journey. I have to think about the steps before I even get there. So it's just not like I'm moving without a plan because moving without a plan, that's how you dig yourself too deep. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, whatever you stream your podcast, giving you information at the center of content, music, money, the artists, the entrepreneurs. We like to bring that information together because people try to rip artists off, but y'all can make money too, baby. Now, this is No Labels Necessary, and we got somebody today who represents that perfectly no labels because the way he's moving we love to have people like iso kenny who is with us today what's up iso bro i appreciate you being here yo yo what's up what's up i appreciate you guys for having me on the platform you know as i always say you guys just give like the best gems in the game to really you know tap into the secrets you know the hidden things in the music industry that artists should really be paying attention to and really just understanding like yo you know it was less necessary for us so yeah for sure Hey man, yeah, appreciate that. Like, first of all, this dude has over 20 million streams on a song called Speak Up that took off. He has millions of streams on multiple other songs. Like, we can get into some of them other songs. He's gonna be able to me, you are the doing the best I've seen in terms of having a social media brand, like building with content, but like hardcore meme content, not just like I'm a personality. But right. still figuring out a way to translate that into music in a way that people are taking you seriously. So we right. want to get into them gems, man, um, and get into how you go throughout your process, because I think it's going to be yeah. really useful for people. But let's start with Speak Up, man. Like yep. When you created that song, like where did it come from? What was the vibe? Uh, that's a great question. Where did it come from? So, you know, when I made Speak Up, I was honestly in a very unique place in my career, you know, physically, like literally, because um. Uh, I made that song while I was in a cast, you know, I was in a cast, uh, just in the crib cooking up, you know, and it was just really honestly one of those Saturdays where it's just like, yo, like I just pump out this content, yo, like take time, not the algorithm, not really going crazy right now. I need something that's going to wake it up. So when I made that beat, when I wrote the song and for one, when I instantly heard the beat, I knew, okay, this something, something instantly drew me to it. And that's kind of how, like, you know, I make my song. I really pay attention to the beats because I know that's, honestly, I feel like that's the main determining factor that allows a song to go crazy or not. So I made the beat, and, you know, instantly within the first vibe, I don't know what it was because I already had the idea of, oh, yeah, when your homie mom is on the beat for minutes. But I was like, I feel like this is the perfect time to release it. So I find a beat. I start, you know, just kind of freestyling to it. I'm like, okay, this has something. This this definitely could go some like it could, it could go crazy. So I start writing to it, get in the studio, and I it just it was one of those things that just flew like naturally to me. And then I just remember posting it on TikTok. Um, what made me realize that it was going crazy was I'd say probably within like the first thirty minutes, uh, it had already like fifty thousand views. And I know like you know in terms of TikTok, that's like oh guys, it's, it's traction. But I'm the type of person where. I don't like to be glued to the social media screen. I don't like to, you know, like, yo, like track down the views and all of that. So I, I said, right, I'm gonna put the phone down and I'm gonna just check the next day. See what's up with it. See what's up with the stats and stuff like that. So check the next day. I see it's already at 2.2 million views. I'm like, okay, we got one here. We got one here. But then what really made me realize that, you know, this could actually have like a life for a minute was when I clicked on the sound and I realized within the first day already, a hundred videos were made to it, you know? So then I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So I wait a couple of days, I'm going back to it. And I'm knowing, okay, yo, this is going crazy. It's going from hundreds to thousands. And I'm seeing it go through a series of trends. You know, I'm seeing it go through at first, like, you know, a car trend of people throwing off their nice cars. It was like, just, it, it flourished well in the car world. And then it transitions to, you know, sports highlights, people showing, you know, their basketball skills or just training and stuff. And then I noticed what really gave it that life was when, you know, I clicked on a sound and a girl used it and she was pretty much calling out like, you know, lies, like speak up, say what you really want to say. 
And then that really gravitated to other females using the sound and it just went crazy from there for for Yeah. Dang, so you didn't do any kind of like push on that side, trying to encourage the trend. This was one of those true organic moments, right? It was one of those true organic moments. The things that I really did though, honestly, was okay. Cause I was in a situation where, you know, I was in a label deal, right? I was in a label deal and it was a tough situation, right? And this is just full, this is full honest transparency, you know, just really even giving game to the artist, right? So I was in a, a label deal where, you know, I had to fulfill the six months of a holdback period. Cause you know, in certain label deals, once you fulfill the commitment, you have six months left in the deal, right? So I was in a situation where, you know, I'm holding the song, I'm like, damn, like, hmm. I know I'm in this whole back period of a deal. Um, if I drop this song, I know they're probably going to try to, you know, come after me, take the song down, whatever. Or I could just be like, damn, like, I don't know what to do. So ended up having to, I dropped it on my own for me, dropped it on my own because I knew the traction. This is a moment two weeks after I probably waited two weeks to drop the song because I was just in that dilemma. So I dropped the song individually through Distro Kid, you know, and then, you know, it's going crazy. And then what I say, labels come like, yo, hey, man, you can't really drop it on your own. We, we got to acquire this song. It's like, you feel me? You can't do that. So that was that was literally a def, like a defining moment of my career. Like, OK, do I give them the song, you know, or do I just take it down? Because they're just going to, you feel me, like try to enforce it to take it down. They don't want to, you feel me, they ain't trying to see me win for real. But I was like, OK, let me look at the pros and cons of this. You know, me dropping this song, you know, it can be good for a sense of, you know, getting the eyes on me that I need or, you know, even just generating the revenue and stuff like that. So I went through with that, you know, they acquired it, dropped it, didn't really do much on the marketing side, you know, because I didn't really want them to spend money on like the budgeting and all that. I just, you know, how like recouping and stuff like that goes. And that's how they keep you on the hole. So I said, I think this has a really a life without even, you know, pumping the gas. And I, I didn't really trust that they could really take it to the next level, honestly. So just let it do do what it do. Um, it just went crazy. And I definitely feel like it was the right decision in the long run. Cause luckily, you know, I am out that deal as of like last year, you know, so now I'm just in the process of really getting a chance to really foster the brand, foster the ISO verse and foster what I'm doing. So yeah, that's where I'm at now, honestly. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I love that because well, one, I don't think a lot of artists really yeah. are aware of like that, that whole back period when you're done, you deliver. Yeah. You right. Know, we'll do that. Um, so one, just hearing you touch on that so people can kind of see what some of the psychology can be and why yeah. it's even if you're technically done, right. you still are, you know, kind of locked down and chained right. down. But yeah. like I think leaning in, still getting the visibility, but making that that move of saying, Hey yo, like I don't want you to put money in behind right. it. Like that's a that's a chess move. That is a chess move, bro. A chess right. move. Right. right. People don't even know what to like, you know, just because people spend money don't mean they're going to spend it right, too. So I think right. that's part of it. Probably sound like you were like, all right, if I if you were confident, it would have like went super crazy if money got yeah. you might have done it. But it sounded like you didn't even really have really have confidence, maybe based right. on what you had seen before that the song could have like yeah. it would have been money could have been spent in the right way anyway. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm I'm not really because based on things in the past, you know, I've had other moments, you know, uh, that really could have went crazy. And I just felt like, you know, you know, the label I was with, they didn't really know how to really make a life out of those moments. You know, it was just OK. You had the influence. I had the influencer campaigns, but it was just like, was it really like the right ones for her? I don't I don't really know. Like, was it really the bang for the buck or all of that? So just based on prior you know, engagements with them. I was just like, nah, I don't want to really mess this moment up for real, for real, for me. So, yeah. That's dope to see, man. Well, you alluded to the ISO verse. Before we get to that. Yeah. I think that concept is just, it's right. crazy. Like the thing that allowed you to do what you're doing in general. Yeah. Right, is your content, right? Yeah. So I would love to hear, like, let's start with still speak right. and then get into content in general. Because okay. it went viral. One, the song is like the crazy. It's just it's such yeah. a concept. So, right, like, all right, that whole speak up and elevating your voice is is yeah. dope. 
but then putting the content together with it. Like, how do you see content? Because you consistently create viral right. content with different types yeah. of song. Like, do you have a specific method or like a amount of time that you use? Like, how do you break stuff down? I honestly, like, this is literally, like, this is the, the gem I have for like, you know, creating content. So when it comes to really getting in that bag of like, you know, creating something, like, I get so passionate about like the visual aspect of it. Like I visualize how I want the video to come out before like I even just touch the camera. You know, I already have a concept in mind. It's like I'm treating in a way regular content for social media, like music videos in a way, or like what's the theme? How can I like, cause I'm understanding when it comes to social media, there's certain language that you have to adhere to. Like, you know, there's TikTok language, there's uh, Instagram language, you know, so specifically with TikTok language, it's more so, okay, you got to, of course, pay attention to the trends, but how can you put yourself at the forefront of that trend, you know? So when it comes to making content for myself, I really just try to visualize, okay, how I want it to look, how is this going to communicate to the people on this platform, to the people on that pl platform, and really just make it to a point where it's okay now at the end, they're invested in me. They're invested on going to the Spotify. They're invested on going to the SoundCloud, any social media platform or music platform that I'm at. So I really just try to visualize, you know, okay, if I want, if I want this to give a certain feel, what's the, what's really gonna, you know, I have to put myself in the viewers, like, uh, shoes, for instance, like, I'll, it'll get so crazy to the point, like, I'll kind of like visualize myself scrolling down like and seeing if i just saw my video right if i just saw this video right now would it make me stop and just think like when i read the title is it's going to be something that allows me to be like oh wait yo like yo this is different and he's actually showcasing what he typed something that really pulls you in instantly you know because you do of course have to you know really in a way kind you you have to play the game for in a way but still have that out to know that okay this is the this is the thing that drew you in but now I'm drawing you to me at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm. Now, it sounds like, yeah, you definitely focus a lot on the hook, right? Yeah, like, for sure. Bring them in. But, you know, a lot of people can figure out random ways to get people to stop. Yeah. The people who do really well at content. Right. People actually are satisfied at the end. You know what I mean? I could just yeah. do some random shit and then yeah. get your attention. And then you don't care right. about the video. Like, so how do you make sure you consistently deliver on expectation and people like replay your video again and yeah. again or share the videos? I think it what it definitely does come down to for me now is every time I try to like the way I, I do content is of course I don't try to go all out at first you know, okay, because I don't want to burn myself out, right? So for instance, when I first started with the ISOverse and first started it, I was recording, it's crazy, I was recording like some of my biggest songs off a $40 microphone, like it was crazy. So that was like the first standard I started at and knowing, okay, you know, it was novel in a sense of, okay, now the idea is something that never you know was there before so i can i can get away with using a 40 dollars microphone and just the idea but now as people are seeing the videos more and more now it all becomes a question of what can improve so now when i knew okay there was i know people are kind of familiar with this so now what can improve now it's the sound it's the production so now more so when i drop things i focus more so on the production because i know like it's it's that kind of you know thin line between you know hearing a song but then feeling a song like you know so now when I make the content I try to really focus on the end goal of okay you know this can be something that you know at the end of the day somebody could just listen to like always you know it could be a song that you know I could just turn on and just yo, know, like I feel like bumping that ISO so now the, the, the way I'm able to really consistently bring that is just really focusing now what can I just improve on and what if the viewer is watching if somebody's listening that they really are able to, you know, get the message that I was trying to deliver in a way. So, yeah. Oh yeah, that's hard, man. Cause I was yeah. scrolling, I was on YouTube last time I was yeah. scrolling and I noticed every single song you do, like every people do these covers and flips of people's songs and things, right. but you definitely treat every single flip like a real song. Right, exactly. Like, Right. That makes a difference. Like even the, now you're doing it, like even the edits of the videos feel like yeah. they're all mini videos. Like what, yeah. where did that come from? 
So honestly, what that came from was definitely, of course, like trial and error of understanding, okay, like I know I'm, if I'm doing something different, you know, I have to make sure that it embodies what I'm, if the production is there, the video quality has to be there. Even now I'm rethinking the way of how I'm, you know, dropping music, you know, because one thing I know I definitely need to do more is drop music. But now instead of, you know, cause my formula was, okay, I post this crazy idea, people want it, but then, you know, at that moment, the demand is so high, but okay, I just have a pre-save link in the bio. And knowing how the consumer is, nobody really, like pre-saves is tough, but it's really hard for somebody to get to that pre-save for, for like, cause the only way you can really know that is knowing your own, like your own kind of behavior when it comes to pre-saves. Like I barely be pre-saving stuff, you feel me? So something has to really give for me to pre-save. So that what's make me think. So the next time, the way I'm trying to reinforce and really pump out content now, music and stuff like that is if I introduce something, instead of it having the demand for it, it's just already going to be out there. I'm taking more of a, I'm doubling down on myself to know I'm not missing on that window of opportunity of as soon as somebody sees that video for the first time, yo, you don't even got to wait. It's already in my bio. It's already there. So I don't have, it eliminates that thing of the pre-save of just running. It's just more so it's, it's fresh. It's there. The, the conversion is instantly there. So I try to really look at it to a point is how can I quickly get the listener to the Spotify to, you know, the, these different platforms. And I feel like the best way for my type of style and my type of brand, since it's based on novelty, it's just giving it to them as fast as I can. Yeah. I, I definitely have seen a lot of people, I mean, you Corey talk about a lot where you know, drop the ball. Yeah. yeah, people <laughs> drop the ball, man. We, we've yeah. had experiences, campaigns we've been a part of yeah. where- yeah song takes too long to, to come out and it just like fizzles. I mean, yours, yeah. I think to a point is even greater need yeah. of novelty. And sometimes it seems like, I mean, the way you create, like you might not even know exactly what yeah. it's going to do, but like, yeah. the, the attention span is shorter and shorter. In of terms course, of, like, it's getting so short, bro. Yeah. yeah. When it goes, some takes yeah. off, you got to drop. <laughs> exactly. Got to drop, man. You know, like we don't. I don't got time. We waiting for that at least five days for spot for Spotify and Distro Kid and stuff like that. So I got to give it to him. I got to double down and really know. Okay, I know the production is there, so I know people are gonna want it. So it only makes sense for me to just have it there as soon as I drop it. Yeah. So yeah, because I've really just been paying attention to even like Russia's strategy. You know, Russia's strategy. You know, the song a week strategy. That's literally what I'm gonna like really try to adapt to. You know, because I know with his fan base, you know, he feeds it to them. He gives it to them. And that's why he's able, they, they have that comfortability of knowing, yo, whatever Russ previews, or whatever, you know, what's coming out. They know they're going to get it, you know? So I feel like, you know, his fan base is kind of like identifiable to like my fan base because they're, it's always people just wanting it. They, yo, I, so you got to drop it. Like, that's my biggest issue. I don't really be dropping as much as I want. So I feel like with that kind of, you know, format, it's definitely going to work out for sure. Yeah, I could see that based on the fact that a lot of people struggle with visibility, but you already have visibility. Yeah. Right. So it's like you could drop a song a week and make sure every song gets seen to a certain extent. Right. Which exactly. Is good. Exactly. Because even like, you know, just looking at the, because people don't really know, I went through a series. I went through a series of phases in terms of my career. You know, first time I really came onto the scene was 2018. You know, I came onto the scene impersonating other rappers right i was known for doing like like i, I ain't gonna lie like i was like ai before ai I ain't gonna count. <laughs> like he was like yo how is he like because you know you get those parodies of people like doing other rappers but i was like one of the few people that knew like their voice to a t you feel me and that really popped off in 2018 i'll never forget it um i did like oh when you ask pnb rock and a buggy what they want to eat went crazy on twitter went viral like a, a world storm and i was just Gave me the incentive, okay, this is going crazy. Let me start doing things of other rappers. But it kind of hurt me in the long run because now realizing when I brought in my music, it kind of confused people to know, like they're more so interested in other people and not me. They're more so interested in when I do, I'm another rapper and not me. So it kind of ruined my identity in a way. So then that really forced me in like 2021. That's when I really started the Isoverse content to a point where it's just like, I had to double down on myself. I had to invest in studio equipment because I really want this music to be heard. So I put that to the side more so, you know, focused on these characters, but even in a way too, like it's, it's still kind of a dilemma there because still like, you know, 
it's it's always that thing in the back of my mind. I don't want it to overshadow me at the end of the day. So it's of course finding that medium of knowing like the end of the day, people are knowing that it's ISO Kenny for me. So yeah. You know why what to overshadow you? So like let's say like if I'm doing these characters, right? You feel me? Like there's always that confusion of people saying, Oh yeah, like we like when you do this or the quiet kid and all of that, but it's, it's, it's all me at the end of the day. So people like meet me in public and they, they, they're used to seeing, you know, the quiet kid and in me and my videos, they only relate to me as like the engineer or something. I don't really have anything of a significance if that makes sense. So now I'm structuring it in a way now that just means I have to double that in the content and understanding, okay, I got to be in appearance with these characters. I have to just be as significant as them. So when I'm at a show or something, they're able to identify with me like more efficiently. Like, oh, not as ISO. Like he really, you feel me? Like he be, you feel me? going crazy. He's not just the dude behind the computer. Cause I feel like that's how people identify me as for real. But if I hopped out as a homie from the 1800s in public, they would, oh, dude, that's a homie from the 1800s. You feel me? Like, no cap. You feel me? Like, it's so, funny. I haven't really heard that kind of dilemma before. But I mean, yeah. you do when there's like an actor, like let's just say Urkel, you go back, right? Yeah. Yeah. And people expect them to kind of be like that or whatever, yeah. but yeah. you're both of them in the care, like in the actual thing, and they're somehow right. still acting like you're the yeah. character, and yeah. you've got multiple characters. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you want to see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you want to check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash grammy don't forget the www or it won't work because jr gets into the details of looking at the data decisions that got made how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign this is real behind the curtains type of stuff so again go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy, if you want to check this out and apply it to yourself, back to the video. So I guess yeah. before we even go further, can you explain the ISOverse concept and all the characters in the ISOverse? Right. So that, that's a perfect question. You know, what really honestly birthed the ISOverse? It was honestly just the musical inspiration because one of the first people, one of the first characters that came onto the scene was the quiet kid. And, you know, the quiet kid to me was somebody you know, of course, it, it was like more so I see these characters as a figment of my about imagination and my personality. Honestly. So the quiet kid is like, let's so the more reserved, the heartbreak. But musically, he can tap into like, you know, that XX extentacion world, the juice world. So I use it as an outlet to even communicate to other markets. You know, 18 from the homie from the 1800s straight gimmick. You feel me? I just, yo, like, yo, I was just in college. Let me just do some funny stuff. And I just made that job. Frat kid to me, you know, that's just me, you know, growing up where I grew up, going to the college where I went to, really being introduced to the fraternity world and knowing like, yo, this is how really they act. So I wanted to, in a way, be able to identify which as much mark as I can, but still having the origin, the foundation of everything, you know, be musically. So it really made me, it started off as something that, you know, of course, like, yo, it's content. But now realizing the opportunities within these characters, it's like, I got to make it deeper. I got to make it really mean something. You know, what's the origin of each character? How, like, they're 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 really just, you know, figments of me and, you know, just my experiences through life. You know, the smart kid is just really the fact of, you know, like, people expect me, you know, I got dreads and something. I ain't really smart, but I'm really smart in them all. Like, you feel me? Like, I done, got, I done graduated and, like, you feel me? All of that. So it's just, like, figments of me and just really just, conveying that musically so now i'm at a point with the iso verse where you know i'm focusing like okay how deep do i want this to go long term it's something i can honestly feel like i can make a whole series out of it i can make a whole tv show out of it it could be something that you know now my shows they're just not iso kenny performing it could be a whole play it could be making skits on stage performing as these characters and stuff like that 
you know, the merch comes together when it's just like, oh, he he dropped this. He finally dropped some merch for intelligence or he finally drops a speak up merch and all of that. I want to get to a point where it's all the system and connected, but it's just like it all works within each other and it favors each other, you know? So, yeah. Man, that's that's crazy because we've, we've talked about all the different types of opportunities that, that come from these characters, right? Yeah, right. And this universe this marvel like universe spawn from one person yeah and then the the you're working backwards or is like yeah right, who is the core right. person right the single person yeah. exactly uh, right like right. What, what's the uh pokemon i think it's eve right yeah. but it has like five different types of evolutions or maybe oh, yeah, like yeah. Four <laughs> yeah. Different ones. yeah yeah <laughs> eve, there we go like right. it's that type of thing right like all these yeah. evolutions that you pay attention to but then all right we, we still got to figure out like all right how do you how do people like appreciate the core thing but i think right now the way you're positioning it and then even just continuously calling it isoverse and and, and yeah. characters recurring right at some point if i like two characters i have to address that you're the commonality you know what I'm right. saying? but then i like you by happens yeah. but if it was just one character it's hard to escape that one character but now like right. you, you doing with the, doing it the way you're doing it is gonna naturally, I feel like, bring it all together. Like, yo, this dude is doing something dope, and you're right. leaning in, where most people try to escape like content altogether. Which I guess we should right. get to because, like, right. people are like, oh, I created all this on this this visibility on social media, but people know me for this thing. You alluded to it. Oh man, I got stuck in this rapper hat. Uh, I mean, well, acting like other rappers, but then I got these characters. I'm stuck in right. these characters. But instead of like just like jumping off the roof. And like, yeah. oh, I just want to be an artist and forgetting about all of it. Yeah. You keep problem solving your way through it and figuring out yeah. like, how can I make this content connect, but still deliver? And now it's right. how can I make this, these characters move, but then at the same time, like help them respect the Kenny. Right. Right. Me personally, more like you keep thinking at level to level, like what drives that? Where is all this, you know, coming from? I feel like it, it really honestly comes back to the fact of like, you know, I'm really an overthinker when it comes to this type of stuff, you know, and, you know, I see it as a way of, you know, I'm the, I'm a type of person, like I, I, I really thrive off of consistency. I thrive off of, you know, adversity and seeing things and understanding, you know, I've been through those tough times of, you know, there was a period of time, you know, when I, I was doing the, you know, the rapper impersonation and stuff like that. And I remember there was one summer you know, there was one summer I, I really said, you know, what, nah, I've, like, you know, what, I want to try to become an artist and stuff like that. So I stopped that all together. Right. And of course, you know, I had to go through the the loss of followers. I think I lost like 40,000 followers in one summer type. Right. So and, you know, I'm thinking like, OK, hmm, for one, I'm understanding. OK, looking back at that, looking at the past experience of stuff, I'm realizing, OK, if I'm going to do this right, then I have to make sure that the long-term goal is in, in mind, you know, cause what makes people jump ship and really just like, you know, kind of feel like they're stuck is because in the beginning, they, they just, they just go through it. They're attached to, okay. Yeah. The numbers and all of that, like, though, this is working now, but deep down they're abandoning that true passion of being an artist and stuff like that. And I knew I didn't want that to be me, you know? So what took those past up and downs of this and that to really gather where I went wrong to understand, okay, if this is where I wanted to go, I have to fine tune it along the journey. I have to stop and pause and say, okay, what is the brand communicating? I have to think about the steps before I even get there. So it's just not like I'm moving, I'm moving without a plan. Cause moving without a plan, that's how you dig yourself too deep. You know, before when I was doing the rap, I was moving without a plan, but now I realize, okay, with this, I got to make it something that I'm not even just selling these characters. I'm selling, I'm selling, you know, something that people can relate to. I'm selling a feeling, you know? So that's why the music comes involved where it's just like now with every character, it, they elicit a feeling. For instance, when you get the, the smart kid, you, you're going to feel smooth. You're going to feel like groovy. It's going to give you that groovy vibe every time you're on a track. You know, I really just try to build the brand of everything. And I realized, you know, I had to look at my weaknesses. I had to look at the fact of how is this going to look, you know, you know, with the show, am I really ready to, let's say people want to see the ISO kid at this event, I mean, see the quiet kid at this event, you know, that, and I honestly just seen it as it's opportunities, you know, like, let's say, for instance, with the frat kid, I make songs within that fit within that world, 
you know, it allows me to go do college tours at certain universities and stuff like that. But still, I can go crazy. And with the quiet kid, I can be on a bill with Pink Panthers or something. You feel me? Like it's, it gets so unique and different like that, where I just don't want to abandon any opportunity, but make sure at the core of it, it all comes down to music. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. And it, it's funny you bring up the, the Pink Panthers thing, because I was thinking about when you mentioned the the getting away from the other rappers stuff, yeah. right? So you have right. the period where you were using their names heavy, and then you flipped into your own characters, and now it yeah. looks like you've kind of figured out a formula where you can do both, right? I saw, like, right. the quiet kid on the Yeet beat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the, whichever kid on the the Pink Panthers beat. So right. I, mean, I mean, this is me looking from a consumer side. Is that is that right. the case? Like, is this you trying to figure out, like, this a way to bring both of these, these different exactly. worlds? Exactly. Like, even, like, this Friday, I'm planning to drop, like, an Afro emo song. You feel me? So it's something that's different. It's novel. I'm going to give it to the fans as soon as it's ready. You know, I'm looking at it now, even how I drop music, you know, because before people were used to getting something new every week. You know, they were, oh, damn, he just dropped a disco song. Then he going to drop an EDM song. Like, yo, damn, slow down, bro. I'm trying to process this now. Like, you feel me? But now <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's at a point where it's just like, now I'm trying to focus on themes. Maybe, you know, it's a summer vibe. People are going to want more Afro beat. They're going to want more upbeat pop type stuff. Maybe I'm building projects, you know, to a point where I could go crazy, be on some L.A. Russell, drop a project every month for real, like just based on things like that. You know, so now it's allowing me to focus and hone down on, a certain re niche that I'm building and really making ISO versus that niche, but still, you know, putting it away where there will be projects where it's just solely ISO Kenny. But even when, when it comes to content, like the ISO verse, I just still have to package it the same way where it's still something that grabs people attention. For instance, if we use an example, let's say, you know, I, I love R&B a lot. Maybe um something that, cause I know one thing that makes songs go crazy. The, the reason why songs are going viral is because they're either calling back to something or it's literally packaged as something that people have never like seen before. So for instance, in the future, I plan to drop like a 2000s R&B theme project. Let's say I bring back the, the next content I make with the song is me wearing like the 2000s R&B inspired clothes. It's a 2000s R&B inspired beats. I'm on like my love don't cost the thing type drip. You feel me? I'm just doing the a skit idea is me playing the radio outside the girl's house and stuff like that. It's all about capturing people within that certain moment. And then they're like, yo, I, I'm buying into this next wave. And then boom, it's going crazy for real. Dang, man. Like that, that's funny because everything you're doing like, is it's such an experience. So it's it's yeah. so rich for ideas, products, yeah. and engagement. Yeah. Like where some people are like, what's my next move? How do I engage with fans in different ways and create content? But it's just there because the right. work that you're creating is so thoughtful. Like you mentioned yeah touring with somebody or just performing with somebody i had yeah. never dawned on that before like we talk about these different characters and creating the show a play yeah. style skit and being able to have them interactive but like yeah. you got your peak panther panthers through joints and you could right. just hop on a show like in real life with her for a tour but then you got some joints you could tour with another artist where some, yeah. most artists are stuck they're stuck with the artists that are in their lane which is the way most artists are moving and doing it successfully, by the way. Right, exactly. Most, most figure are having struggle to figure out how do I do this, uh, this, what is it, variety? What's diversity? Like, how do I do this diverse thing well? But I think exactly. that you're actually pulling it together. For sure. And I know that's the thing. That's why it's like a double-edged sword. Because there are those some days where I just realized that's a fact. Every artist that's popping right now, they really are sticking to their niche. And there's that's honestly the best way to do it. It allows you to stay focused it allows you to really just hone down on your sound and craft it you know and that's why this thing this this what i'm doing it feels like such a riddle you feel me because it's tough it's not easy to understand okay like how how what's the perception of me to do this and do that but i know once i really continue to you know really hone down on what i'm doing and over time once it really clicks i know it's going to be like one of the biggest things because i know it is something you know, that is not what's never been done before, but it doesn't mean that it's easy, it's hard for real, for real. But I know once I really click it and it comes together in its full entirety and really lock in on it, it's, it's, it's going to take off way bigger than now for real, for real, for sure. Man, you got the key, bro, because yeah, start being strategic with it. That was, I think mm -hmm. that's the difference. Yeah, exactly. Sucks, right. If you don't, if you're not willing to go through it, yeah, you've been through the ups and downs, you realize, all right, I need to create a plan, like you said. Right. Yeah, but being willing to not see the numbers 
be massive right. for a period of time. Like, right. I mean, you got some bigger numbers, way bigger numbers than most, but right. like not hit where you want to and feel the progress. Right. But at some point when it all hits together, because right. you played that groundwork, it's going to be right. crazy. Real talk, real talk, for sure. That's yeah. a fact. That's yeah, a big- I- I have this theory, man, like, because I see it with you. I've seen it with, like, other clients we have that are, like, content creators, talent artists. Y'all seem to be a lot more patient about certain things than than I would say, like, the typical rising artist, right? Yeah. And I personally feel like a large part of that is because you guys have the, the I guess, the the safety net of the audience kind of yeah. built, right? Like, right. one, you're not, like, starving for attention like most new artists are. You have it already, right? right? And then two, you're not a completely starving artist in that degree either, right? Because right. you're able to, to monetize the, the audience and things right. like that. So this right. is me, like I said, me looking out. I always kind of felt that way about the different clients that fit that box. Do you feel that way? Like, do you do you feel like you're able to kind of have the breathing room to make smarter decisions as an artist because you've already built the foundation for yourself as a, as a creator in certain aspects? Yeah, definitely, 100%. I feel like, you know, um, there is more patience that goes into it because, you know, like you you already put in the work to be a consecrated and now it's just, you know, it's just putting in that same work to be an artist. You know, I, I feel like, you know, um, when it comes to the reason why we're so patient is because we know we have a vision in our mind when it comes to how the end goal wants to look. And we know we, we invest in time. I know like, you know, guaranteed it's going, it's not going to take overnight. You feel me? That's it's, it's, the, it's, I feel like it's the fact that, you know, cause I knew I knew how it was to be a consecrated before TikTok came into the picture. I knew it was a rarity. I knew it was something that yo it was rare to be a content creator on Instagram popping and stuff like that. But now being an artist that's just coming up, you're literally seeing people go. You scrolling down, you see somebody's life change overnight. So I can understand the feeling of why, like yo, like damn, like why, is, why I'm not lit like this person type. But I feel like you know what allows me to have that stability and that patience is because you know really been doing this for years and understanding I was really able to see the life cycle of where being consecrated, the the life cycle of really being a consecrated. It wasn't as prevalent, but now it's in a way like people say oversaturated, honestly. So I can understand why, you know, some artists may feel like, damn, like I'm not really lit like that. But I feel like, you know, the fact that, you know, I was able to go through those ups and downs of a consecrated and an artist and just allow me to be more patient in the long run. Gotcha. Which, which, uh, which bag has been the biggest so far? The artist bag or the creative bag? I say definitely that creative bag. And <laughs> more so Mace, more so that <laughs> more so the creative bag in terms of um I'd say, you know, brand deals and sponsorships and all that. Cause you know, um when I was going crazy, um I was like going crazy on YouTube, like when I first started because it took time for the YouTube to really start hitting, you know, to the point of, you know, making like, you know five to 10 K a month, you know, but now when the bag of, you know, the, the, the brand deals, that's about, I really didn't know about you for me. Cause I didn't have a team for, I didn't have a team of social media, a social media team that really just went crazy and went out the deals. But honestly, like when I first seen like, yo, like this, how they want they give them for this, bro. Like, I'm like, Oh, nah, this is done crazy. This is a whole market right here. So <laughs> that would just made me realize, okay, like, yo, like, this is this is how it's supposed to be. You're adding value. You know, you have people that, you know, that really want to see you, you know, build and build your brand, get money and stuff like that. So I say, yeah, definitely that that content, man. Cause you know how it is with this music stuff, bro. It's just crazy. <laughs> they playing out half a penny and stuff like that, man. They going crazy. <laughs> yeah. So which one's bigger between platforms, like just straight platform, like TikTok monetization or YouTube monetization? From what you're saying, keep it up. Honestly, I say definitely YouTube, but people sleeping on Facebook. Like Facebook is definitely, but now it's 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 a gone to Facebook. So I say, for instance, like you know YouTube, you know I'll make roughly like you know five to seven on there, you know, because with YouTube it makes it it's a really more so about, of course, like are you a long form content type of person or a short form content type of person? You know, I make like one minute video, so it's not going to go as crazy as if I'm making like a 15 minute video for a, for a, right. Uh, Facebook, you know, when they had their run, um, I, I wasn't getting none crazy, but, um, I think the most that I made off of there in one month was like, I'd say like 5,000 or so, you know, cause YouTube, I mean, Facebook is based off of at the time, it was based off plays on, um, 
reels and stuff, but they took that meta, took that away entirely from Instagram. Can't get paid from that anymore, which is crazy. Um, so, but the long form, you still get paid for that as well. So now you've just been making a couple thousand off of there too as well, you know, just grinding on that. So, now you, but I say definitely that YouTube bag is always different. You know, you always, you're always going to see people hopping on YouTube because they know how lucrative it is, you know, to see like, yo, damn, like I just posted a, a 20 minute video it could be at 100k and that really equates to like a couple thousand dollars like that you know so it's just it's insane for real for real yeah so th does knowing that does that does that affect which platforms you spend most of your attention on I, and i guess what i'm trying to ask is like are, is, is your content creation process dictated more by where you feel like the content is, is is better based or whatever or how you're feeling or are you paying attention to these things and tweaking your content model in regards to like how the, the platforms are treating monetization. Yeah, for sure. That's a, that's a great question, you know, because um, it's like with these platforms, you definitely have to own and know like when it comes to Instagram, right? Instagram is more so like professional based. Like it's more so, I feel like honestly, the Instagram algorithm, they, they got to fix that. Cause it's not really, it's, it's not, it's hard to grow on that platform for real, for real. So now I'm understanding, okay, when it comes to the sense of importance and the sense of urgency to post, I'd say TikTok will fall last on that list. I mean, Instagram will fall last on that list. Then it'll probably be more so second TikTok. Cause TikTok, you know, it's more so to the trends. It's always going to be updating, you know, and then YouTube, of course, that's probably, the truest platform mainly because you, I feel like on YouTube you have your like hardcore fans on there. Those are the people that are actually going to send you money for for you asking like yo I, yo I'm down bad bro I need like twenty dollars you they gonna send it to you bro like they gonna they gonna give it to you. So I feel like when it comes to YouTube it's always been that platform for you know family. It's always been that platform where people can relate to you. You know they really invest in who you are. But when it comes to Instagram and TikTok it's just that's when you, you really know their attention span is just like, nah, they just on the platform, they'll just go to the next thing for real, for real. So, yeah. So I definitely have that incentive to know what I post. I may post on this platform, but I ain't going to post it on here and here for real, for real. I'm not going to be as consistent on this platform as I would be on this one. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Man, when I, um, I hear that some of the things you ran through, it makes me think back to, just that stigma of the content creator transferring over to the artist, right? right? There's been some who have successfully done it. Is there anybody right. whose blueprint that you're following or you kind of like at least take note of their path and consider and how you move? I'd say definitely a lot. Um, Of course, you know, people don't like to give DDC a lot of credit, but he's definitely been somebody, you know, that is just changing the game, you know, in terms of like, you know, being a, content creator artist specifically a youtuber and he's going crazy he signed to epic records uh, another person too that people um really don't even realize is joji you feel me i feel like you know in terms of my music and joji probably had it he had it way harder than me for real for real because he was doing the filthy frank johns and i was like yo like that's <laughs> a break out of that because that show was some crazy content but even just knowing like that's really how you become successful you're you're literally success leaves clues so i was literally at a period of time and understanding okay there are definitely people that have done it before me. What are the things that they have done that I could translate to myself? And I knew when it came to Joji being successful and, you know, DDG being successful, what they relied on was the fact of giving, giving hope and time. You know, I remember even Corey saying, Corey saying something so powerful was like, you know, things really do take time. You know, for instance, you know, you could post a song right now. But let's say months down the line, somebody's going through something and they just find your song and it relates to them and that feeling. They make a TikTok to it and it goes crazy for it. For it. That's how I see things. I see things, okay, you know, we're living such in a fast-paced culture, content creator culture. Everything is just, you know, it's it's just where we're adhering to what's in front of our face. Once you plant those seeds and now, you know, I'm willing that, I'm understanding, okay, like, you know, maybe it's, it's it, maybe it'll take, you know, a two years, three years for it to get to really where it want to be. I'm fine with that. You know, I'm not living in that six month period of this and that. I'm going to put in those words. I'm tracking those monthly goals to make sure, okay, this is just a plan. But definitely I feel like it's, it's, it's just about, you know, giving that time, giving it time to, you know, go with the plan, you know, fail. And people, people are afraid of failure, but I actually plan to fail. Like, yo, like if I post this, I want to see what they're going to do. If they don't do crazy and it's cool, I'm able to know what works and what doesn't work. And it's just about 
being authentic with, you know, what you're doing and stuff. Cause I feel like that's something that's needed across social media. It's just being authentic, being unapologetically you, you know? So, yeah. Hey man, then you throw on actually having good music. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. For sure. That for sure. Look, you, I, I think people recognize pretty early on. It's like, yo man, like this is one of those playful songs, but like this shit hard. Like this it's is hard. Like, right a song song for real because you presented it that way put in that yeah. work but then i remember when you were saying uh, we, we were all talking you were saying that you wanted to tr- uh, focus on like the r&b wave but i hadn't yeah. heard any r&b stuff well you hadn't really dropped any like serious yeah R&B exactly right, right, right. Not free agency and i was just like yeah. oh yeah this shit is crazy <laughs> i can see him going that direction because i i love yeah. r&b i was Appreciate just like nah, man, yeah. the, lyrics, the lyrics like yeah. the whole concept tied in it. And then yeah. I love basketball. So the free yeah. agency, like, oh, yeah. come off my roster. It's- oh, this is <laughs> <you're> free. <Yeah. laughs> no, I appreciate you, brother. Man, sure. You know, like th- that whole concept was crazy. Um, so like the storytelling, like I take note of all those little things, yeah. right? Right, right. That that was happening. So I'm just like the talent's there and he's done yeah. it in different ways. I didn't even really understand, like realize your voice was like that, like that. Yeah. Um yeah. So I'm just like, I mean, the music, you have enough of an audience. There's always going to be somebody at the quality yeah. of music you make it that likes what, what you put out. Exactly. And that's the thing that I definitely had to understand because I'm not going to lie. I did go through like a, I went through like a crisis for, because the thing, you know, going back to that situation, you know, being in the label, right. It was at a point where, you know, I dropped the song. I had, I dropped it in October 4th. I was in the deal up until December 28th. So it put me at a, a thing where, yo, this song is going crazy. People want the follow-up. Like, you know, that's usually what happens when you get the hit, you want to follow But I knew, like, damn, like, yo, I could do a follow-up, but I know it's going to have to go through the label for real, for real. And that is, it could be something crazy, and it's just going to be that process. So I just say, you know what? I'm going to just have to wait it out. I'm going to be a sitting up real quick. I'm going to just keep posting, speak up, you know, and stuff like that. And I realized in a way that was kind of – a tough thing because it got to a point my own followers is tired of me posting speak up so much you feel me but then now you know when I got out of the deal it's like yo damn like do I follow the should I go down that lane and to speak up should I you know make something like it you know labels when I dropped that song it really showed me too how labels really move I, I talked to every label and like literally every label for real and realizing I'll call them like oh bro I so uh we love your music bro I asked them Yo, what's your favorite song? Oh, that speak up joint is crazy, bro. Like, I'm like, yo, I have a catalog deeper than that. So I knew, like, in certain that way, too, like, you know, signing to a label at that point would kind of be tough, you know, because it's a test to see, okay, they would definitely want me to make something just like that. Um, But there were some labels, too, that I talked to that, you know, I really appreciated when, oh, yeah, like, we seem to speak up, but yo, we listen to run, we listen to disco dancing, you have a catalog. Once they say stuff like that, it really makes me realize, okay, okay, they would definitely know what to do with me. But, you know, I was stuck in that dilemma of realizing, yo, like, what what kind of path should I take? I don't want to be that guy that just, you know, went straight into this just because it was what, what was popping. I really want to build something from the ground up, which would be that R&B, the isoverse type of stuff, because I do think it's it's, it's going to flourish. It's like you said, no matter what, there is somebody, I have that mark to where somebody's going to gravitate towards it and like what I put out, regardless of what it is. Yeah, bro, you got like the K Camp type of versatility. Yeah, people give K Camp his his flowers. For how he moves. Real talk. People say I look like K Camp. Somebody said I look <laughs> like a mixture of K Camp and Victor Oladipo. I was like, hey, yo, oh. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like hey. That's but hilarious. Like, That's yeah. hilarious. I can see. It. <laughs> I can see it. Though. I can't see it now. Yeah. <laughs> what I what, what I respect about that though, like, is just the constant patience, like what yeah. Corey said, man, yeah. which allows you to actually move with a plan. Like That's smart, yeah. you can have a plan, yeah. but if you don't got a patience to right. actually carry out that plan and deal with it and have those moments, I'm gonna sit down on my music for a second because right. I don't want to be in this safe situation with this label anymore. Right. Oh, yeah. I got these new labels reaching out to me, probably offering right. me a good amount of money, but right. oh, I don't got the sound out that I even want to be yet. Right. Yeah. And then I got to I mean, I had content waves. I'm popping with this, but I'm going to chill out and then take lower numbers as I transition to something else. Like, right. I love to hear 
you talk about that again and again and again because I think people just think the game is like this one wave of up or you down don't not knowing that it's like those ups and downs you're not trying to go all the way down yeah right? that's the trick it's like how do right. I not go all the way down until I can right. get my next like few right. levels up and how do you how do you kind of see that that I just walked through from like a, right. a bird's eye view Right. Facts, facts, facts. I feel like, you know, even that's a fact. People misconstrue the, you know, the ups and downs. They think that ups and they, that this this is up. And what makes people think that is just the per- perception of social media. Rather, they don't know what somebody had to go through. And I feel like what stops somebody from going all the way, what makes somebody go all the way down is giving up entirely, you know, giving up in their true vision entirely. But staying true, staying true to the course and really thinking like an artist, thinking like a content creator, thinking, you know, in the long term, you know, going through those troughs, those ups and downs. I feel like it comes down to understand, like, the road isn't perfect. If it was perfect, then, you know, everybody would be doing it. But it's just understanding, like, yo, it, it gives more, much more meaning to why you do what you do, you know. And it's it's a really just being in a way, you know, in a way, like, it's, it might sound crazy, falling in love with uncomfortable situations, you know, because you know that uncomfortable situation is going to mold you, you know, when it's a comfortable situation, you know when it was like to be in that uncomfortable situation so you can maintain it, you know, because there was that rabbit hole of, you know, me, you know, I could have just been that, you know, that guy that made speak up and just tried to keep doing down that lane, but that would just hinder the whole ISO verse as a whole because now when I did talk to labels, the question was, okay, let's say you make this big record. Now, usually the thing that artists do is, you know, they slide down that that lane. If somebody went crazy off a club song, they're going to keep making that type of club music. But I did it a way where it's just like, nah, like I know I can really be something universal. I could be, you know, the next Drake or so, but the first ISO Kenny, you know, so that really just comes down to, of course, honing on the production. It comes down to continuing to study and be a student of content creation of making music and all of that so I feel like it's just important really to just have faith in the process people forget that you know based on just the current times that we're in now they're just focused right now and just like yo I need this to happen now but not you got to see five years ahead did you feel like anybody was looking at you crazy when speak up was taken off and then the next joint you drop is a R&B completely different type of vibe it's 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 one of those things, right? Like when I did drop it, you know, um, people were like, yo, like, of course you'll get those haters, like, yo, bro, like, bro, we like the rap, bro, stop singing, bro, like, you feel me? But I feel like, you know, people didn't, they were on, in a fact, I'd say surprised. I was actually even, because I'm gonna be a hundred percent transparent, you know, I was kind of in a way, kind of, well, what's the right word to use? Kind of reluctant about the R&B, you know, because I knew it was just like, yo, I've had songs like that in the past, but it's just like, yo, are people going to be, it's, it's are people going to really gravitate towards to it. But when I dropped it and really people understood it and just understanding the love that I got from it, it allowed me, you know, to say, you know what, like, yo, like all I had to do was just consistently give them this. Now apply, when I make the R&B music, it just has to, you know, be at such a, such a significance as, you know, the other type of content, you know, whether it's just like, you know, how I shot the video, it's a theme around it to draw them in. Cause what really made me realize too, what could flourish in the R&B was, I remember when I was first going crazy, I made all like the R&B drill song, you feel me? Like, and I knew that was the thing. Okay. That's the thing that could pull people in. Like they realize, Oh damn, he, he could sing for real. So when I did drop it, it was crazy for people like, yo, boom, like they definitely expected a follow up or speak up. And stuff like that. But I was just like, nah, like, if I'm this my first time really being 100% independent, I really want to start it off right for real, for real. So I can know I put something out like that. Even if I do down the line, I drop another rap song or whatever, you know, that's a cat. That's a, I have a catalog for them to go back to, you know? So, yeah, for sure. Man, what you're saying, 100% independent, I want to make it clear for people listening. You're not like an artist who is like where your following came from, like, oh, you were signed to some label deal. And right. Oh, the money was put back behind you right you know a lot of people here oh somebody had a label well you know yeah he's indie now but he had a label first it's like nah it's right. not really i mean i'm gonna yeah. say sign sign because i don't know all your information but like it's not right. that that image of let's right. say meek mill when he went independent right it's like right. Eh. exactly <laughs> it's even that even that situation too so the, really the whole story behind it was like you know um popped off in 2018 um signed signed the deal back in like 
honestly, like 2020, signed a deal back in 2020. I was like 20 at the time. Um, and it's crazy. It's it's funny because, you know, it was so weird because I signed a deal thinking that, okay, they would want me to stop making the content. But they're the one that told me, yo, start making the content again. I got back into it, but, you know, not me to talk, not trying to talk down on them or anything, but it's just like, you know, it was unfulfilled promises for, for like, I'm thinking, oh, I'm signed to labor. I'm done doing this content. They said they got playlists on deck. They said they got this and that. When I drop now, excuses starting to come in like, yo, you actually got to drop more for them, you know, to pitch out the playlist, you got to show a presence and stuff. So then I realized, okay, I got to put in this work for real. So then, you know, that's when I just got the incentive, you know, to just do my own thing. And then, of course, once they started seeing the traction, once they had something for them to work with, that's when they're going to start putting the work for you for it. And that makes sense. You know, it's, it's, it's understandable, but it was just like my idea of a label. I, yes, I ain't going to lie. I'm a, I was that, that kid. I was like, yo, I, I thought signing to a label was the biggest thing. You go to the label meeting, you take a picture about a logo. Oh, yeah. Like, you feel me? Sh- work in silence. You feel me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? And, you know, damn well, you, you, you ain't really talking about nothing crazy, bro. So that was me. But then realizing and going through it, I was just like, nah, like, yo, this is totally something different. It was a learning process. I'm actually glad I was able to go through it. So I'm at this point now to know, let's say if I never signed to a label and I was speak up, came up and I'm getting the offers and I'm geeked, I'm su- super hyped. I'm quick to jump the board, but I'm realizing I've been through this before. I'm just going to invest in more time and just, you know, see what goes from there for sure. Oh, yeah. So, man, just, it's, there's so much to pull, but I, I feel like I want to see just some of this next, some of this stuff that's next in your journey. Cause I know yeah. I feel like we like, we got to have you back, man. Yes, yeah, like, sir. You just got, uh, like it's such a unique journey in this path that you're, you're forging, especially the ISO verse, bro. Yeah. And, Again, that patience, like even hearing you talk about like drop and speak up a whole lot of times, right? Yeah, right. And, and then I want to hear your, like truly what was going through your head and how did you convince yourself to drop a video on speak up again, even after you see people yeah. complaining about it? Like, how do you get yourself to do that? Because everybody kind of goes through that, like, yeah. Fan- feedback and I want people yeah. to like me they hate it like what were you doing to convince yourself to keep going honestly it was the fact of like truthfully generally like I wanted to drop I wanted to make new content I wanted to make new things but I just it was just in the back of my mind if this went crazy it's not it's not going to be independent I'm, it's going to be you for me it's not going to really for me it's going to take some time before I see anything for real for real so it's just like you know I want to just give it away like that so it was it was just the fact of like yo I right, just endure it was, it was all about endurance because knowing like yo Come December 28th, come to like, I only had to wait about two months, like two and a half months of just focusing on speak up and then I could do whatever I want. So definitely when I first started seeing the complaints and stuff like that, I was just like, man, I don't know. Should I, should I, should I just go ghost? But then I'm like, I don't like going ghost. I'm not that type of person where it's just like, I, I take a hiatus. I'm not Kendrick Lamar. You feel me? They ain't go like, I'm not, for me, I can't take a hiatus like that. So I'm like, damn, like, you know, I'm going to just thug it out. Um, t- I, I'm, I was just like, yo, I'm gonna just thug it out for a for C, you know, that they, they don't really understand. And knowing, knowing too in the back of their mind, they don't know the situation I was going to. Like, this is actually the first time I'm letting people know for real, for real. So they didn't know that, yo, like, damn, like, he was on a crazy label situation. That's why you had to promote the song so much and stuff like that. Because if you dropped his own music, you know, they'd have to acquire it and stuff. So then I just realized and just put it in my mind, it's just only a matter of time. I'm gonna just keep posting it. And then when I'm out, be going crazy for real. Man, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. I when I think about those type of moments, my best example, like current example, is like the Warriors when they were going to the championship every year, right? Yeah, right. People felt like it was gonna be a every year, every year, the every year thing. And I don't right. remember if it was a coach or commentator, maybe one of the Warriors, they were just talking about like it feels like that now, but at some point this is gonna end. And it's going to be a thing of the past, right? So you got to appreciate it while it's here. You got to go hard and just, like, do what you got to do in that moment. Because now it has been, like, what, two? Well, no, the the Warriors still came back. But it's not that same, like, we got KD, we're killing everybody, y'all, untouchable. It feels like that was forever ago now. You know what I'm saying? And people not even thinking about that. So they had that kind of hate for them in the moment. But yeah. now it's kind of like a fresh thing. And it's the same thing when you look at like, okay, I'm promoting, 
I'm going hard and I'm getting in people's face. Like I might be line stepping to, to some levels, but then once this promo period is done, then yeah. you know, I'm moving on to the next thing. They're not thinking about it. You, you kind of have to have that energy and like, and almost right. for me, this is like coming up. Like I think once you get to a certain yeah. level more professional, it might be easier, but like coming up, I had to almost feel personally uncomfortable to know that I was doing it right. Because yeah. you start off, I don't want to say like humble or a little bit, you know, like hesitant, like, am I doing too much? Yeah. But you got trained, right? To like right. do what you're supposed to do. So it's like, nah, I really got to do like 10 times what I want to, what I feel comfortable with just right. to do what I'm actually supposed to do. You know what I mean? Right. And, and it seems like you developed that kind of muscle too. That's a fact. Now that's a hundred percent. Cause even I remember um, what you guys said too, is like, you know, you said that's the key. Like you should already have like 40 to 50 pieces of content made to your song. And it's just a fact, like, you know, we get tired of what we're doing before anybody else does it. So I did this kind of like mental hack in a way to kind of, if I'm ever feel like, you know, like, I don't know, am I overdoing this? I kind of think in my mind, okay, if this other artist posted a snippet that they already post today, would I really care as much? No, I really wouldn't. Honestly, I'm probably just going to see it and just keep scrolling. So that just puts me in my mind to know like, oh, it, people people not really gonna think about it like that for as much as i'm thinking about it because if let's say if drake just posted you know three times a week he posted a song to a snippet to rescue me like nobody really gonna care for for or if anybody uh kendrick so any any artist for if they posted a skit if they wanted to focus on that posted it several times a week i know it's like okay i'm just gonna scroll and see oh wow okay he's really promoting the song so it kind of gets me out of that anxious moment of you know, doing too much because nobody ever wants to seem like that guy that's doing too much. That seems like they're forcing something, but we wouldn't be doing that if the algorithm was sturdy, like you feel me, but it's not sturdy. So we yeah. have no other <laughs> choice but to just pump it. You feel me? So now I just get back to that. I was like, yo, y'all going to see this for me. Y'all going to make sure like, you feel me? That's how I think about it for a hundred percent. Man. Well, like, last thing that I want to ask you about that we got to get off is that thing we touched on before, like yeah. your, sh- your first show. Yeah. People do that experience. Of what yeah. hundred percent. So like even the show experience was crazy for me because before speak up came out, um, I performed really last time I performed, I say it was like 2018, you know, cause even performing, it brought something to my attention. It brought something to me so crucially that I never thought about I'm focusing on these videos and content, but I never really stopped to think, yo, like, how is this going to translate to a live audience? You know, because I was saying before, people were so used to seeing me on social media, you know, kind of put me in that one realm. It put me in that room where it's just like, yo, like, when are you going to step out of it? When are you going to make this tangible? When are you going to bring this to the fans? So when my first show came around, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I was nervous. You feel me? I was nervous and really like, you know, just damn, like, what's really the thing to get the crowd engagement? Do I look cringe when I move or something like that? You feel me? So it was a dope experience, but I realized, you know, that was an untapped thing that I had to work on. I had to work on being a better performer, really embodying the song and stuff like that. You know, everybody has something to work, especially being an artist, being a performer is one of the things that really separate the good from the the great, you feel me? Because you could just sell out a show for for just based off your energy. You know, you're going to give the audience a good time. It's going to go crazy. So the first experience was definitely a learning curve for me. It was definitely learning, okay, what's my swag when I'm on the stage? What's it, what's, how can I incorporate my personality on social media to the crowd? Maybe it's every time before I perform, I, I say just a funny story or something that, you know, is really going to make it riveting or even to a sense, like, you know, I'm, I'm realizing, understanding, like people, I never thought this, but like people actually plan things on their shows. Like they could literally like, you know, <laughs> like have a fan do this for a friend. Nobody's going to think anything of it, but it's those type of things that go a long way because it's social proofing. You're social proofing the people like, yo, bro, like, yo, damn, like, he going, he crying in, on the show, like, you found at the show, like, yo, damn, like, you feel me? He going crazy for us. So just stuff like that, knowing like, yo, it's a whole different market that you just have to take just as serious as you take making the music and making the content. So of course, there's a lot of people that, you know, they love making the music, but when they get on the mic, they're nervous. Or they love, you know, the, they have great stage presence, 
their music, but their music is mediocre. mediocre. I'd rather be that artist where they have great stage presence and their mu music is mediocre because they they really sold that feeling at the concert for people. Like, yo, I just like his personality. I like that, the fact like he gonna turn me up when I go to a show. So I realized, you know, I have the good music, I have the great music, but now it's just like, okay, you know, really getting better as a performer, really making sure that, you know, it's the conversion is there. Okay, boom. He got the he got the nice quality music. He has the content, but now okay, now he needs that performance. That's something that I feel like I definitely have been getting better at, you know. So, but it was it was definitely a learning experience. The first show, you know, really love performing. I love you know being able to connect with my fans. You know, the fact that I went to a show and I had in New York, people are telling me like, "Yo, bro, I like yo, know, you're." I show my my people your videos all the time. I love your music. So, it really gave me a sense of like, "Yo, this is the thing that you really want to think about." Because being on social media so much, you could kind of put yourself in between like between you and you know the person because you're just seeing a username con comment you're not seeing an actual person for you're not really thinking about it like that but really once you get past that you break that fourth wall that's how you're able to build something long term that's bigger than you for a for man that was the way you said that was beautiful <laughs> yes i appreciate you <laughs> yes so um, Corey, you got anything? Nah, oh, man, he 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 heard it, man. Hey, I was like, that was a, a, a great <laughs> way to end it, man. Um, I appreciate you hopping on. All y'all follow ISO Kenny or just check out ISO Kenny. You, you can learn a lot from just how he's moving. You see how thoughtful bro is. So, I mean, perfect representations of, of no labels necessary in, in many ways, right? In all ways, basically. <laughs> he moves sure. every way that we mean it. You represent that. So, uh, <laughs> for real, for real. So, yeah, I'm Brad, man, Sean. This is yet another episode. I don't know, I'm Corey. Damn, bro. I'm like, I know, I'm just, <laughs> on this song. And we out. That's okay. All right, B. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. <laughs>